Hot damn, I knew you'd show up. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, November 15th. This is my sister's birthday, my most favorite person in the whole world. So I have to say, happy birthday, sis. I love you, Joy. All right, what we do on this show, folks, is I like to talk to you about OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I'm out there all day trading penny stocks, though I do do some options on this side. I primarily look at the OTC and penny stocks. Remember, penny stocks are any stock under $5, and they're on every single market, and I do trade them all if they're moving. Now, we look at a lot of OTC stocks. That news right there is all from the OTC market. There's about six or seven days worth of news there. So if you're not able to keep up the news like I do, that's a cheat sheet right there. There's lots of prime news in there. Mergers, acquisitions, uplisting, the sort of news you hope to find when you're reading the news. So dive in. You're going to enjoy it. Now, when I'm doing research on my OTC stocks, this is a site I use. It saves me so much time. This is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Now, think about that. You're doing research on an OTC stock. Why should you be going out to Google looking for the information? Do you look for your milk underneath the sink? No, you know it's in the refrigerator, so that's where you go. If you know current information is the only thing this site posts, why would you start anywhere else? I swear to God, it won't just save you time. It'll make research a little more fun. Honest. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and hope we get a bump. Boom! Oh, look at this, folks. This is a better, better, better day than yesterday and last week and last month. Well, maybe not last month, but we're getting better. We went up from $2 billion yesterday to our old average of $2.1 billion. Hey, we're climbing. It's not anything new, but we haven't been here for a long time. Share volume. Boom! We get from the five billions up to seven billion. That's great. I mean, it's not a fantastic number. I would really rather see it up at 10, 15, 20. But hey, that is better than five and it's growing. And three for three, our trades are up today too. We are well over 300,000, 323,000. Do believe that is the fourth time we've hit that this month. This is a trend. We are coming up, folks. This is feeling good. I'm liking this. All right. I've got some stocks I want to share with you now that are off the beaten path, but they caught my interest. I think they can make us some money. I'm hoping they're going to catch your interest as well. So if you're interested in seeing what I got, throw on your hiking boots. We are going stock tracking. Now here's a stock I'm quite familiar with. This is ticker SFLM, SFL Maven Core. I got into this two, maybe three years ago, back when I was investing only in cannabis. I was a novice trader, didn't know anything about diversification. God, I wish I did. And back then, SFLM was a cannabis company. Well, one morning I woke up and they weren't a cannabis company anymore. I don't know what they did with it. I don't remember reading any forewarning, but what they had turned into overnight was a high-end jewelry company. They were selling jewelry on eBay. Exactly. That's what all the cannabis investors thought when they saw that. And they piled out of this company so fast and the price fell just as fast. And as you could guess, I ended up holding a bag. And I've been holding it ever since, riding the ride with them. Well, they didn't do too bad selling jewelry on eBay. They're one of the top sellers on eBay doing over a million dollars a month. They tell us down here that they've done $130 million in sales so far. So it's not chump change. It just isn't real appealing, right? Well, today they had more flux news come out. They're shaking things up. They're changing things again. And it got the attention of the investors. She finished a day at 0006 with almost 72% gains. Now, we don't normally look at triple zero stocks for one reason. They just don't move fast enough for me. I want it to pop. I want popcorn now. I don't want to wait. I want to eat. So that's why I don't look at them. But if you catch a company that looks like it's about ready to take off and run, you definitely want to get into a stock that's at a triple zero price. So I thought you might want to go over this news with me as well. They are on the pink tier, they're current, and they've got both those green ticks I tell you to always look for. There's a lot of important information being represented by those green ticks, and it's real important, especially if you're in it for a long hold. But if you're just day trading, nah, it's not going to matter a whole lot. 
Now, I've already told you everything that they do, so what was the relative volume around this news today? Holy cow, whoa, what a jump. We went from about 20 million to almost, a, well, over a half a billion shares. I told you there was a lot of attention from the investors today. Share structure, what do we got over here? All right, they tell us that they have uh, 2 billion unrestricted and 1.4 billion in the float. I wasn't sure which it was, so as my habit is now, I come on over to the most recent disclosure on your pinks. They're normally going to tell you. And they tell us right here they are at 1.8 billion shares in the float. Not a real low float by any means. Financials. All right, this is a little curious. It only goes up to 2020. It says they made $7 million in 2020. Nothing for 2021, nothing for 2022. Looking at the quarterlies. Well, they now show us some money on the quarterly basis, but they don't show us anything for 2022. So you would get the impression that they're not making any money, but that's not true. Again, jumping back into their most recent financial disclosure for July to September, they did $2.5 million worth of business. And one of their most recent news presses that came out at the end of September says that they made over $7.8 million in sales so far this calendar year. So why there is nothing showing up over here, I don't know. But they are making millions of dollars still selling on eBay. But it looks like that's not what this company is going to be doing anymore. Let's take a look at the disclosures. All right, we've been bouncing back and forth into their most recent quarterly report for September. That just came out two days ago. And they've got some filings that are about five months old down here. So we got nothing else here. So let's take a look at that news. Now the company has a lot of news, but we're only interested in the most current piece because now all the other news is just simply outdated. So this came out today. They tell us here that SFL Maven Corps today announced that following a change of control, Chad McKay has been appointed as the chairman and CEO of the company, and he will oversee the launch of the company's new business plan that focuses on acquisitions or technology licensing opportunities. Mr. McKay has been actively involved as a director with other companies and organizations. Among the boards on which he serves currently and in the past are, and there's a whole big list of them right there. He goes on to tell us, the CEO, I have been in private equity for the past 15 years and have done a lot of exciting deals. Our team has built an impressive deal flow of prospects that could be acquired or technology that could be licensed by SFL. And finally, he tells us down here that they are going to divest of SFL Maven of Florida. That is the jewelry end of the business. They are getting rid of it and they expect the deal to be completed by the end of November, this November. Now, I don't know what they mean by divest. Are they just gonna sell it and get paid for it? Are they gonna spin it out? What are they gonna do? I really don't know. And I'm curious since I've been with them ever since they've been here. But the stock had a nice run today and had some pull back and I think just with what he's put out here there's going to be some more bounces right now the market is hungry for new mergers new acquisitions shell companies now this isn't a shell company but once he divests of the jewelry company they have no income so hopefully he's got something lined up immediately to happen and that would get this stock running fast let's go take a look at that chart we are now looking at SFLM on TOS. That is Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform. You get it just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Now I've gone back a year, so you could see she has been falling for a long time. Now what did I say I got into this two or three years ago? So let's just take a peek at three years. Eek. <laughs> no, that's not. That doesn't look good at all. I'm coming all the way into six months, four hours. Ooh, that was bleak. All right. Six months ago, we had a high of uh, double zero, one four. 
in three or four days ago we had a low of triple zero three and right now we are double that at triple zero six we had a huge jump right here over the 200 she didn't hold it long and that went from call it seven to twelve so you're looking at about an eighty percent run right there she came crashing down here and look at the volume oh my god she has stunted everything else on the page so we got a ton of volume today just in change of control we don't know a whole lot more than that our technicals, our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, just like the MACD, it's crossing the pink line at a very strong angle and pushing up fast. Look at our MACD. Talk about change in direction. That is parabolic. And our RSI is shot up from 40 right up to 69, just under the overbought. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot going on here. She took a dip, like I said, about three days ago to that triple zero three. Today had a lot of volume come in and shot early in the day, hitting her high of triple zero seven and only pulling back to triple zero six. And it's hovering right around that 200 on the one hour right now. Our technicals are excellent, folks. Our PPO is skyscraping, as is our MACD. Our RSI is up over 60. Everything looks really good right now. Five day, five minute. All right, forgetting the days before, we had a nice run right at the bell. She took off from triple zero four, hit her high quite quickly, 10 o'clock in the morning. Stayed up there, you had five, 10, 15, 20 minutes to get out of this before it fell. She came down here all the way to triple uh, zero five and then bounced back up to six and is sitting there right now, right on top of her 50 day SMA. Our technicals, let's squeeze that open. Oh, our PPO is still pushing up. Our MACD has just had a crossover coming off of the signal line, and we are just approaching 55. Now, triple zero stocks normally don't do a lot of moving. They go from five to six, five to six, five to six, and they'll do that for a very long time. I'm talking weeks, even months. They'll just go sideways with no activity. This has just jumped from triple zero four to triple zero seven. That is a big jump in one day on the triple zero chart. So. She's showing activity, she has speculation, we have change of control, and right now the market is hungry for these acquisitions and mergers. So I keep my eyes on SFLM, see what this guy comes out with. He could surprise us and this thing could take off and it's not gonna take a lot of movement to make some money on this. Imagine if this could just get up over double zero one where it picks up momentum and gets into second gear. Then you're gonna see some rise. All right, let's go take a look at another stock. Now, here's a company that's probably playing deja vu with you right now. This was a hot stock at the beginning of the year. Everybody was talking about it. The charts were on fire. They had a merger that they were getting ready to get into, and everybody was on board. And then all of a sudden, some legal action came up, a court case, and it stopped everything dead in their tracks. Well, today, it appears some news has come out via some tweets that maybe we're back on track. It looks like this legal case may have ended. So she finished a day at 0 .0031 with just over 47% gains. She's on the pink tier and current. Got those green ticks I'm telling you to look for, so it all looks good. They are a shell company. Now, this means they're not in business. They're just not making any money quite yet, and everybody knows that. We're waiting for an acquisition or a merger like they were talking about. And they go on to give us a little more information here in their description. The company currently has no operations, but has plans to merge with an operating business in the cybersecurity solutions. And then they go on to explain all the different things this business can do. So they know who they're gonna merge with, and we're just waiting for it to happen. We've been waiting a long time, and it looks like it could be happening now. So what was the relative volume around that tweet today? Not too bad, we jumped from two and a half million to almost 14 million virtually seven times her normal volume. Share structure, all right, we got a lot of different numbers down here, so as my new habit is, I go into the most recent financial disclosure. 1.3 billion shares is what we've got in the float. Not a low float, we haven't had any of those today. Financials, well you're gonna have zeros because they're a shell company, you're not gonna see anything here whatsoever. And disclosures, we've got anything new here. 
Well, they're obviously caught up on their financials. I'm looking for an 8K, but not one that's three years old. That's 2019. So, do they have any news? I don't believe they even have any news right now. Uh, March of 2022, VMOS Technologies LTD launches VShield Cloud Security. Now, maybe VMOS Technologies is the company that they're merging with. That sounds vaguely familiar to me. All right, I don't see any recent news here, so let's jump on over to Twitter. Now, I've got a couple tweets here. These are not from the company, but they do show us the places that they're getting this information. And the first one I want to show you was put out in March of this year. JPEX. This is the case. Hovendick versus JPEX Alpha Ridge that is holding the merger up. Currently, there is an injunction granted to Hovind Dick. There is no new court date yet. You can use the smart search here. And then they go ahead and they actually show us where they got this information. So this court case was on the docket, but we just didn't know when it was going to happen. Well, if you go up further now, let me squeeze this so we can scroll. I'm going all the way to the top. All right, JPEX case dismissed without prejudice. He doesn't give us a whole lot of information here. He just points out a little bit on the filing. But someone else, JPEX, ready to make some noise as case was dismissed. JPEX, the court case dismissed. Now it's ready to explode, ignite, launch. JPEX, on long-awaited case dismissal, back to Pennyland. You can see people are excited. They've been waiting for this for a very long time, and the charts were screaming at the beginning of the year. You don't believe me? Let me show you. Now I know you want to look at the one year chart for JPEX. So I've got it up here. One day, one year. We're going to show you that she was cooking at the beginning of the year. This is January. She had some huge flames here. Hit a high of almost four cents. And right now we're at 0031. That is over a thousand percent drop. Now keep this in mind, folks. This is very important. All of this excitement, all of this big price rise is all about a merger that was postponed, not canceled. And it looks like it's back on track now. So she did have a huge fall. And right now we're way over here and we are very close to the 200 day SMA, but a long time on the yearly chart. And our technicals on the yearly chart look very strong as well. Let's take a look at our six month, four hour view. So we got a high bubble here of a penny and a half roughly. That is a 500% difference from where we are now. Some huge falls. She's been crawling along the floor here with a little bit of rolling around on the 200, but not a whole lot going on. We did have a nice jump right here about two weeks ago. She went from about 002 up to 0032, about a 55% run. Took many days to do it and only a few days to throw it all away. Stopping on the 200, today she's bouncing off of that and had a huge jump and is holding her gains up above the 200 right now. All of our technicals are real strong. PPO and MACD have both just had a crossover and are pushing up. And our RSI is just under the overbought at 69. Looking potentially strong to me. Five day, five minute. Nothing going on for all the days until today. She didn't get across that 200 until about 10.30 this morning when she took off at 10.45, hitting her high for the day. She did have a little bit of pullback, but not much. She went from 0033 to 0031 and is sitting on her 20 right now, looking really nice. All of our technicals show signs of continuation, actually. Our PPO is still above the pink, pointing up, though it's very slight. We have an imminent crossover, it looks like, on the MACD, also going up. And our RSI is at 57. So there's a lot of potential sitting here, especially since you know how much excitement there was at the beginning of the year. This is the same deal, the exact same deal. When the market is hungry for these deals, this one has come back to life, and now you know about it. No excuses if you missed this jump. All right, let's make this interesting. We're going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ now. Now, keep in mind, any stock under five bucks is a penny stock regardless of what market it's on. So we are looking at ticker SNES, Scenes Tech Inc. 
Now, Scenes Tech Inc. today was a hot stock. There was a lot of activity around this stock today because they had big news, but the news was bad. It was a rotten egg, at least in my opinion. However, the investors found a silver lining around this rotten egg and they pushed this price up. Now, it did fall back a little, but she's held a lot of her gains. And I think there's going to be more gains to come because this silver lining they found, it's legitimate. So they finished today to day at about 19 and a half cents with almost 36% gains. Now something you do have to keep in mind with penny stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. These major exchange stocks have minimum bid price requirements. That means they cannot go under a dollar and stay there for too long. If they stay there too long, they can be yanked off the major markets and thrown down to the OTC. Now they'll get a warning. They'll get six months to get their price over a dollar for 10 to 20 consecutive days. If they do that, they're out of hot water, no problem. And the best way to keep up with that is the 8Ks. They normally won't put it in a press release, but it always has to be put into an 8K. So what does this company do? Well, it's a peculiar business, but it's needed. Scenes Tech has developed an innovative technology for managing animal pest populations through fertility control, as opposed to lethal approaches. The company's first fertility control product ContraPest. It is marketed for use in controlling rat infestations. ContraPest's novel technology and approach targets the reproductive capabilities of both sexes, inducing egg loss in female rodents and impairing sperm development in males. Bet you never thought you'd hear me talking about that stuff, talking about stocks, did ya? So what was the relative volume today around this rotten egg? I think it's more about the silver lining. Look at this. We jumped from 1.6 million to over 52 million. That's a lot of attention for bad news. And she's up. Share structure. All right, they tell us that the float here is 12 million, and they're absolutely right. I have checked it. It is 12 million at this very moment, but it won't be tomorrow. The news tells us of a reverse split. That's the bad news. So where the heck is the silver lining? I'm going to show it to you. Be patient. <laughs> Finances for this company. Uh, they are making money. They did $600,000 at the end of last year. Don't forget those three zeros right there. And then quarterly, uh, they did about $200,000 first quarter, two hundred seventy-seven dollars the second quarter. And we've got room here for another quarter. Maybe that is sitting over here and just hasn't been posted yet. Yeah, right there. We got a 10Q. That is for September 30th. So if you're interested in what their most recent revenues are, that's your information right there. And jumping on over to the news. All right, there it is. Centec announces reverse stock split. So let's see if we can find that silver lining. Centec, the rodent fertility control experts and inventors of the only EPA registered contraceptive for male and female rats, ContraPest, today announced that it intends to affect a reverse stock split of its stock on a 1 to 20 ratio. The reverse stock split will become effective at 11.59 p.m. November 15th, or as they say up here, it will be trading on a post-split basis on November 16th. So we're getting one day advance notice. There's going to be a 1 in 20 reverse split here. And you know how these things work. After there's a reverse split, the stock plummets. And most people bail if they get any heads up about a reverse split. But all these people are piling in. That's because of that silver lining. All right already, what is the silver lining? It's the float. The float has become ridiculously small. They had 12 million, remember? Well, now they're at 610,000. Thousand, You are just over a half a million shares. And people like to trade stocks with low floats. So after the reverse split on the NASDAQ, this thing is going to start trading. And I get the feeling it could run because you're in front of the people with money. And this may help this stock to get up over a dollar. Wouldn't you like to get in at 20 cents and have it go to a dollar? It could happen. Let's go take a look at that chart. 
So we are now looking at ticker SNES. This is a six month, four hour chart. She has been under the 200 most of this time with a high six months ago of $1.15 and a low at the end of October of almost eight cents. And right now we're at about 20 cents. She does have a habit of these huge spikes. You can see some real nice jumps all the way down, including today. Today she's had a nice jump. She got over the 200 on the four hour chart, but she has pulled back real hard. Our technicals show that, that they had a lot of strength and that they are kind of settled right now. They're not exactly doing a whole lot of anything. 20 day, one hour view. So 20 days ago, we were at 56 cents and there's our low bubble of about eight cents, hit it real fast and bounced right back up. And she hasn't done a lot since hitting that low bubble until today. Woo hoo look at all that volume. I mean, there's absolutely nothing to even look at back here. And then all this came in on a bittersweet cup of news. You've got this big rise on the low float and you got this big drop on the reverse split. And tomorrow, that's all we're gonna have is 610,000 shares to play with. There's a very good likelihood that's gonna draw a lot of people's attention, folks. Technical show, she was strong at the first half of the day and weak the back half of the day. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Whoa, what a blast off. Now there was a lull. It didn't take off right at the bell. There was a lull there. It started here at about, uh, Oh, 10.15 as a matter of fact, and she ran all the way to 10.45. So you had a 30 minute run here. She started off at about 15 cents and went up to 38 cents. You're looking at 175% gains at her high. She came down, bounced off this 20, tried to recover and then just lost it all and has crushed the 200. And even after market, she is still hanging underneath the 200, but is working her way back. I do like the way our PPO and our ADX is lining up here. You see how this kind of looks like a mirror image, the blue line doing this and the red line doing that. Well, when you see the lines coming together, you know the price is falling, guaranteed. When they get real close and start to spread apart, that's where you may want to consider getting in. Because as soon as those blue lines and red lines start parting, the price is rising. And that's what we see here. We do see them starting to separate. We do see a trend of rising here. Now all we got to do is get the public's attention that it's only got 610,000 shares on the NASDAQ in front of all these people with money. The MACD, she is just now approaching the signal line and hopefully is gonna cross that. And our RSI is real low. The potential here, folks, isn't the reverse split. The potential is that super duper low float. 610,000 shares, it's gonna start trading tomorrow on the NASDAQ in front of everybody. I think it's going to be hot. Now, I don't know how big of a deal uh, rodent contraceptives are, but people really don't investigate when they're playing a low float stock. They're getting in, they're riding the escalator up, and they're getting off on the next floor before it comes back down. So do yourself a favor. Keep an eye on SENS tomorrow. Super low float. Chances are it is going to rock and roll up the hill. You might as well catch a free ride. So I've given you three stocks that you've got to keep your eye on. They're all going through changes right now that can make us some money. SFLM, getting out of the jewelry business, has had a change of control and the new CEO has his own plans and it sounds like he wants to administer them quickly. And we don't know if it's going to be a merger or an acquisitions or a license deal or what, but it's bound to happen anytime. Then you got JPEX. They're just picking up the ball where they dropped it and continuing on. They've got that merger with, is it Vmos Technologies? I believe that's who it is. The ones they postponed back in March and looks like they're back in gear right now. And there was a lot of excitement around this at the beginning of the year. And the last stock, Scenes, well, yeah, 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 rat contraceptives are not very appealing. I'll give you that. But a 610,000 float is and I think that's going to draw a lot of attention tomorrow. So you've got three stocks you need to keep your eyes on. Don't blink. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.